Hello everyone, this is Grey Show, and so bring another CH2 replay. It's a 3v3 with Araxel, Mod, I'm oh, sorry, Mo in red versus Ruin, JC, and Ditcher. It's on Airbook Station, and we have two Vermont and OKW versus two Americans and a Soviet. If you want to make your own replay, do so via my Gmail and or Facebook on my YouTube channel. Send it, I'll take a look, and maybe post it on the channel. Make sure, of course, no mods, that you have an interesting game with some unique feature or something cool about it. And I'll take a look. Um, if it's terrible, I'm fine with it. If it's not competitive, I'm fine with it. Just don't have it be AI or something on those lines. That, that, that Those typically don't go or really are really entertaining. Um, so it's just, just a few heads up on that. But in any case, uh, I believe the person who submitted this, I could be wrong, is a Raxel. If I'm getting that wrong, I apologize if someone down here up here. But I honestly don't know. I think this name sounds familiar. But I am not entirely sure. So there's that. Um, anyway, let's get to this game, shall we? So Mo leading the offensive. Nice job getting in here. Kind of used the building heavy cover to overwhelm these Pioneer squads. Even by itself, these squad members should be able to knock out the Pioneer squad. MG, though, going in. That could help turn the tide. Uh, Mortar also on standby. So it looks like he's really going to support spam. Oh, nope. We have Grandier coming out. And <laughs> It's like, eventually, he'll deploy it. Eventually. Uh, meanwhile, we have a Stern Pioneer squad also pushing up using the building as cover and once again annihilating another squad But I'm assuming he's moving up to the next building kind of hold back the enemy I'm assuming he's doing that. We'll see how effectively that goes for him um, Stern Pioneer is not great long range, but they're in really good cover so they can take the hits and keep dishing out the damage So right now Edelbrook is a weird map because you have this like wide open area. It's very choke pointy by the way It's it but still, you know, wide, a little bit more wide open area over here. We have the building. This thing is, oh my god, MGs will, like, swarm it. That way they can kind of, like, guard it in certain directions and make sure that they can hold this key choke point. Or you have a guy in here or a guy over here. They'll just try to guard while the, this building, then the kitchen's fire and burns down. So the wide open middle area. Then you have more clustered cityscape. And this is very clustered. It's really clustered compared to, like, Angamute or something along those lines. But those more lane-based, but... It doesn't have so many twists and turns, I would say, in terms of just, like, there's, there's, yeah, you have this road going through, but there's a lot of, like, areas over here that just makes it very difficult for, like, a straight shot. Where I'm going to mute, you got, there's very few things that would block a shot going down main streets, and the streets are wider. This is a very, this is a lot more congested of a map. Good mortar hit. God damn, those, those Soviets did not stand a chance. But, like, an example would be over here, if you place an artillery piece, you could probably hit the enemy base. Um, literally by putting your artillery piece right outside of your base. So, it, it's one of those situations where you're actually really close to the enemy line. So, that brings up faster engagements, which I like. But, I know some people find that annoying. Big ally blob. We have an NG that did a suppression burst, but was able to get a full suppression hit into it to really pin them down. Volk squad's coming in, trying to take mid. Mortar... Wow, okay, just hanging out in the pit. I actually think the mortar is, like, flipped the wrong way. Yeah, it is. You can actually see here that the men are actually off their center balance. And I sw That's kind of funny, actually. Okay, they kind of reoriented themselves. But it looks like they're firing. It's going to fire straight up. But no, it fired, like, at an angle. That's cool. Interesting. In any case, uh, a lot of allied forces over here. Just trying to take the star point. And again... Yes, this point, usually close quarters, infantry do really well. Riflemen are typically, I associate more with medium range combat. Not long unless you get like an LMG or bar. Uh, that, again, they are extremely effective infantry and very good front line. Probably the best starting infantry in the game in terms of sheer firepower. Before you say, ooh, Grisha, the five star stern pioneer squad at the British infantry section, five squad with Brens. It's like, yeah, but you have to upgrade them. It takes a lot. Rifleman, you don't, you don't really. You can upgrade the weapon rack, but you don't have to really get anything else. Jesus Christ, I'm looking at the Axis, and I'm seeing a lot of territory gained by them. Now, the question is, will they be able to keep that advantage? Grandier squads are picking them off as they go. That's pretty smart. Mortar being uh, taken out, or at least shot at. With the MG, we have a like, conscript squad moving in. Malta of Cocktail most likely going into that building. So expect those men to be... Uh, oh, nope. He got out in time. Good for him. Yeah, get inside the building, which is on fire. That's a great idea, Conscripts. That's a fantastic idea. Anyway, a lot of men in the buildings just causing havoc. Nice job with the Stern Pioneer Squad using the building to kind of get around the MG to flank it. 
Unfortunately, I don't think he was expecting the AMG here and also all the infantry right there. But hey, he got around it just fine. And he's still holding. So right now the Axis, if I would make the assumption, would probably want to lock down a lot of these key territories. I don't think they're going to be able to hold it. It's very unlikely that they will. Just because the more you press against the Allies, the longer they ha Well, the quicker they'll have just like this situation where they just keep waiting, waiting and have so many men that one squad here or there is not going to stop this. It won't put a dent into this. It'll, it'll, you know what? You'll probably do as much damage as probably Yamcha would do against Broly. So if, take that reference for you, and if not, look up Broly to kind of see how much our goddamn annoyance that can be. Good grenade, though. Good grenade. Anyway, American forces by Red Terra are advancing. Great Deer Squad's trying to lay down. I'm assuming an S minefield. Unfortunately, they're kind of not going on the minefield. And they also have an engineer squad, so technically they could get a minesweeper. Holy fuck. Uh, good mines. Really good mines. That captain's barely hanging in there, but he's still hanging in there. Um, where's this MG? Okay, it's in the building over here. Suppressing the MG over here, but the riflemen are coming in from behind, which could open this up to a flank. We also have mortar fire coming down. I expect more grenades and stuff to hit it. Good idea of retreating. Again, you would be overwhelmed. That thing would probably die if you waited like another 20, 30 seconds. Uh, riflemen pushing on in just... Oh, see, again, overwhelming a lot of the Volk squads. Now, you give Volk squads SCG-44s and rake them up. Yeah, they're, they're going to give riflemen a very hard time, but... Uh, base, yeah, they're they're just standard stock infantry. They're not going to do all that much. So, you know. Uh, Rifleman keeps on the advance. Oh, MG saying, ah, oh, fuck no, we're going to stop them. Though, we have a smoke grenade going off from the lieutenant. Um, we don't have a lot of munitions, though, from him. So, most likely, we're not going to see, uh, like, them running up to throw grenades. If anything, I fully expect they're just going to decap it and pull back. J oh, nice mortar hit. Uh, so, that way, they can just keep the men on the front without risking too much wow the allies just countered freaking hard they pushed on in they actually have a fighting position going down this region just trying to hold out which is good it'll stop the allies for a brief moment i'm sorry the axis for a brief moment until the axis do something like this and get an at gun and a flame mortar to just say burn baby burn to everything that the axe or the allies thought they would use to hold them back well something just all right, I think Rifleman ran through here and died. Good S minefield. Really good. Flame burning down the fighting position because it really doesn't have a strongest defense. Let's say a bunker does. Wow, one good stream and it's gone. Yeah, it's it's a goner. More mines being placed. Smart idea. Uh, they are putting fighting positions down. Uh, not fighting positions. Uh, capture points down. God damn it. Resource points. Jesus Christ, I can't talk. So these caches are essentially going to help the supply issues that both sides have because this map doesn't have exactly a ton of resources or spots so again you can use the limited amount so for example you have this one right here the one right here and this one that's it that's all you have which is nice because that also keeps the resources down on Everbrook as long as you're not you know as long as each side controls their own respective points so right now we're seeing the munition point held and right now if that gets captured by the axis which it just did it's going to be relatively close. The only difference is the Allies have this cash down, which is giving them five extra munitions, which is why the Allies have this lead. But overall, it, it's dead even. This map is very good for being very um, balanced, I would say. And again, it's not perfect, but it is somewhat more balanced than, let's say, other maps that can kind of just sway wildly. Jesus Christ, this blob. The blob is back in town. And... The poor Stern Pioneer squad. Half track also deployed. We have some infantry going up here, but uh, not going as well as they might hope. Actually, a huge left flank opening up. MG kind of just being flanked by a bunch of grenadiers. Not a bad idea. Capture the munitions point, gain that lead, and maybe even capture this point if you could. Axis kind of just constantly putting pressure. Allies putting a lot of pressure in this point over here. We have an MG over here that could activate armor for some rounds, and I'm assuming. If he does that, would probably be able to hold him off. I the half track kind of moved mid. That even that this thing could really kill an MG if it didn't act beyond pushing rounds. If it does, this thing is screwed. Like seriously, it is screwed. Um, MG opening fire, managing to suppress him. It will, they'll still capture the point, but still, he can't. He's not going to advance anymore. But yeah, it, it, to put in perspective just how screwed this thing would be, it would kind of just be once again. Broly 
uh, just going almighty mode and just like one punching someone, you're you're gone. You're done. You're absolutely gone. Uh, I he if for those who don't know, Broly is essentially a giant jockhead character in Dragon Ball Z that is so powerful and so muscle bound that he literally puts probably the the mountain not the mountain uh what was that guy uh hodor to shame and just like sheer size like he's like a mini giant in terms of like every other character in dragon ball z like he's huge um his muscle is probably the size of goku himself like his arm muscles i'm not even joking his foot is probably the size of goku's entire like front body so yeah he's massive and he just kicks the shit out of them which is why people love him in case you ever want to hear my videos and you hear Blue Leader say a joke or something. Meanwhile, once again, anyway, back, you know, to the game instead of my anime, anime references. One thing I will say is actually the sway that is currently going on. Both sides have countered and retaken territory very effectively. My, um, they've managed to push the enemy back from their really strong point. So the first the Axis pushed the Allies back, then the Allies pushed the Axis back. Now... The Axis pushed the Allies back, and now the Allies are trying to get, regain some territory. Now it's kind of evening out a little bit. So I really do enjoy that because, again, it shows both sides are at least decently competent at this stage in the game, which is nice to see because usually, you know, some games I just see it's it's one-sided. There's not much fighting. But in this, I mean, all sides have a decent army, or at least comparatively so. So very curious to see what happens. Doctrine-wise, we have, uh, for the American, we have the Recon Support Company. Pretty good. I really like the IR Pathfinders. You didn't really pick them, so I'm curious why you picked this Doctrine. But also, the Cluster Bombs are really good for killing infantry and maybe pinning vehicles. Uh, Araxel, great for the Soviet industry. We saw it over here. Kind of repairing vehicles very quickly. And we see if he puts a couple right behind the building. So, you have instant, like, healing on vehicles, which will allow the Allies to keep on the fight. And especially on this short of a map, that... That time to get back in the fight is critical to hold a lot of these key juncture points. Damn, Panzer Grandiers holding point. Very good close range, so the captain had kind of some issues. Yeah, you know, it's good close range, but the Panzer Grandiers are... <laughs> they're, they're pretty damn good. They're pretty freaking good. Uh, speaking of on the Axis, we have special operations. So we have recon and a lot of support abilities for infantry and armor, which would really help, again, having the extra little range. And then we have uh, Storm Doctrine, which is a lot of... Well, it's artillery, you got mines, it's a lot of random abilities that, in my opinion, don't really go together, but if you like, like, if you, you could be a jackpot winner and be like, I like all these, and then you get them. Technically, this will even count as recon for you, so you can call in the Suka Bomb Strikes. Artillery, you got some mines that are really powerful, and ambush. It's really munitions heavy, though, that's the only thing about this I would probably say, it's extremely munitions heavy. So let's see, allies, uh, we still have one of each team that hasn't really picked anything, allies launching a small counterattack. Trying to push on up. They did decrease the pack. Woke squads on standby. Very curious why they aren't trying to push up. Maybe they just see the situation. Oh, we have a Greyhound. It used to be one of the most destructive units on the map with its canister shot. But now it's been pretty much reduced to being a support vehicle. But that being said, it was as we see here. Oh, nope. We're going to see it fire over here. It, it, it does okay. Greyhounds are not great. But they'll, they'll, again, they're, they're a good support vehicle. Which is what I'll say. Uh. Meanwhile, we look at the re points. We see here that the Axis have been putting a lot of pressure on the Allies in terms of victory points. So that's good to see. Again, because again, if we can currently see who's had at least more territorial gains, it's the Axis. Um, that being said, Allies just regained both, so they're going to start putting some pressure on the Axis. But I don't think the Axis really is to worry. Because again, we double check here. We can see here that they spend a lot of resources on lighter vehicles. Araxel, uh, we can see here he's getting a lot of the heavier stuff, but it's still going to be a little while. Red Terra. Uh, he just got the major, and now he's King of Sherman, so that'll be the first allied vehicle of heavy ordnance on the field. Uh, the, oh my god, this half track's just burning everything down. Again, not really doing as much as, well, you would think, but it, it's doing okay. Meanwhile, the OKW, they also went for lighter vehicle. We have a Stuka being deployed. Again, can be very effective on this map because it is very close quarters, so get a good Stuka bomb, you can wipe out a lot of units. Um... We have a lot of frontline infantry with him going possibly with panzers. We'll see if he deploys any. And we have Ditcher going for the heavier stuff. And looks like he's going to wait a little while. He could probably have deployed, or I'm assuming maybe a Brumbar in his future to really deal with the infantry. But I'm assuming maybe just to be safe, a panther would be better to deal with the allied armor. Good 
howitzer shots by those, well, two American howitzers pushing back the Volk squad. Grandiers moving up with, um, oh, sorry, Grandiers on standby with Pan's Grandiers moving on in to, cap to counter a lot of this stuff. Nice. Captain King in the building and uh, using it to just get the fuck out of there. Good tactic, good movement. I like that. Again, kind of using your environment to your advantage. Meanwhile, uh, god damn it. Uh, paratroopers trying to hold the line. They could upgrade to LNGs, and these things were beasts. They, they, they will tear infantry apart limb from limb. It's gorgeous. It is amazing. Um, Greyhound moving on in, getting a couple shots in, just trying to hold the line. Looks like we have fuel trying to drop on in. This can be countered by AA guns, but it looks like the, uh, the Axis really don't have that much AA to, well, active, I should say. They, as long as they have the Panzer Headquarters, they can shoot down, but as long as, as far as I can tell, yep, they, they only, this guy doesn't have it yet, so, you know. Nor does any side of an Oswind. Anyway, Allies trying to counterattack, but the Axe is actually doing a pretty damn good job at holding the line. Good, uh, Pack 40 just pushing back the Greyhound. Pack 40, though, missing the final shot. Grand Ears moving on in to kill a rifleman. Uh, we have a half-track Vet 3 now. Just priority mission is to burn everything alive. Uh, helping capture mid and access pushing back on right. You do have a Sherman over here, though. Uh, I don't see a pa Pack 40 is kind of in the wrong area. This area probably better. Here, uh, maybe an S-Mine. Or, a, or a, yep, an S-Mine would probably be very good. You have enough for it. You could deploy a... Actually, fuck it. You could use your half-track to deploy the mine. So, again, you can lay it down real quick and get the fuck out of there so you're not really worrying about the Pioneer Squad building it. It, it just rapidly deploys and you can leave. I actually just had that issue on a, uh, a game that I had today during my 24-hour live stream. You may ask in great shot, how are you still awake then? I, I, I don't know. I, I literally went to the movie because I'm like, I can't sit by my computer. I need to do something. So I relax in a movie theater and watch The Grinch. It's okay if you have a small if you have like small kids or you know someone of small kids they'll enjoy the movie but if you it's it's funny because my my terminology is the Grinch the new one is meant for like single digit kids where the Grinch of like the 2000s is meant for um like teenagers like that area because it's of more crude humor and then the original animation I would say is for all ages because it's way better than both of them but still anyway. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, a uh, weird choice for a voice for the Grinch. I wanted him to have like a more of a, a well, a cocky accent, I would say. In any case, MG and the Stu get pack all guarding this area in case the armor comes back, which would probably be able to push back a Sherman very easily. This isn't the weak Stu. This is the good Stu that's good against armor. Stu bombs coming in. Might be able to knock out the MG on. Oh my god. That... Poor, poor Mortar was trying to get the fuck out of there. But it's like, nope. <laughs> Bitch, where are you going? <laughs> and knocked him out. S-285 moving on up. We have a lot of defense over here. So most likely the Germans will need some artillery. Uh, this is where a Panzerwerfer would come into effect. Or a Brumbar. Brumbar, would, in my opinion, might be a little bit better. But that's just me. I think that would be a lot more effective at counteracting this stuff. And pushing them back. But again, we'll, we'll see how things go. Uh, right now, we do have a S-85 on stamp. Damn it, I'm thinking of a... I'm, I'm literally thinking of an Axis vehicle. Brumbar would be good against this shit. Sorry, let me rephrase. And for them, uh, most likely an S-276 or Katusha, the artillery this stuff to death. Jesus Christ, I can't believe I fucked that up and said, Yeah, the Germans should... You know, the Soviets should get a Brumbar. Technically, if they do steal Brumbar, that would be incredible. But wow, that was a lapse of judgment. Um, Arm piercing grounds would be great right now to burn this uh, Greyhound. He does have... Well, okay. I mean, that MG might make it very difficult for it. And, well, an MG to keep firing at him. But it looks like they did decently. Oh, oh, great bundle grenade. Does cause a lot of damage to that nice little blob. Meanwhile, on the far right, we have a Stugan AT gun battle with the Sherman. Uh... Although the allied AT gun's like, no, just get the hell out of here. Uh, Stuke on standby, most likely going to fire a barrage over here. Not a bad idea. Knock out the howitzer, maybe even the AT gun as well. Germans trying to hold mid. They should be able to. S-85 helping the guard against infantry. I'm oh, sorry, armor. Fuck. <laughs> just lose my mind here, everyone. It's fine. It's fine. MG currently guarding star. Make sure the allies don't get it. 
I'm assuming we have a bunker here, but I'm assuming he might put a cache as well. Uh, back here might be a little bit more safe. Uh, Stuka opening fire, so they have some decent artillery. And these guys are all grouped up, so I see, I expect a good shot. Wow, okay. Oh, that was a good one. He went all across and hit both of them. That was a really nice. So that limits the allied artillery fire, at least temporarily. Also, that decreases their veterancy if recruited to down to zero. So, you know, all positive. All positives here. MG opening fire, but I'm assuming we have something coming in. Uh, judging by the units deployed, I'm assuming maybe, let's see, a major? Probably a major calling in a strike. And the major strike is okay. It's not incredible, but, I mean, as long as you... Well, aren't in a building that's very close to dying, like so. It, you're, you're relatively fine. I, I think if he moves over here, uses the car, he could probably hold this area pretty effectively. Allies, though, capturing all three points and launching assault with the Greyhound, moving on in. Armor, piercing. Oh, and sorry, he has a Maxim. My apologies. I thought he had a MG42, but no, he stole a Maxim for some reason. Grandier's moving on in. Uh, he, he did get a Brumbar, as expected, to push back this stuff. Uh, Greyhound could be very effective versus, I'm sorry, Brumbar could be very effective against Greyhound if it gets, like, both shots in. I feel like it, this Greyhound can't really take too many shots, though with the bunkers now gone, uh, they're going to need something to fight the infantry, and I feel like the Brumbar is way more suited for that. MG now also guarding mid with that other one. Oh, boy, it's, uh, Axis starting to turn the tide, but we'll see. Wow, uh, Greyhound dodging the shot from the Brumbar, it looks like. Uh, Brumbar... Most likely, we'll oh, start those to push it up and start, slowly start pushing this stuff back. Though we have an SU-85 again redirected to help with that, so most likely the SU-85 will push back the Brumbar. But the thing about the Brumbars can take many hits. Brumbars have great front armor and they can just take hit after hit after hit. And uh, again, because of also the um, the penetration defenses it has on the vehicle, and especially in the front with the slope, it makes it. So, uh, you'll see a lot of tank destroyer shots just bounce off Brumbar. So, not 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 good. Meanwhile, over here we have the Axis kind of pushing on in. Oh boy, they're trying to take the point very hard. They moving in the half track. Holy fuck! Did that Stuka just literally murder? Okay, it looked like he murdered a lot of German forces. Maybe that was caught up, but I swear to Christ, it looks like he murdered a lot of his own men. <laughs> Uh, they, they, they weren't friendly fire, I swear. They were, uh, killed by the enemy. Through Stukas. They hijacked the Stuka in midair and, uh, <laughs> just killed our own men. Uh, meanwhile, we have another Sherman being deployed. Uh, so that would make, what, two total? Yeah, two, along with the mortar carriage opening fire. So, oh boy, we have actually heavy artillery coming down, though. So this guy actually built some artillery. Not a bad idea. Use it next to the medical base, open fire, and try to hit this big blob of forces. Get a good shot in, like the one against that mortar. Maybe even hurt the armor, the cache, the AT gun. There's all sorts of targets you could honestly hit. A big armor push, though, on left. Seems like. Of some variety. Sherman and Greyhound pushing up. Pack on and standby, though. Getting a few nice shots, though. This terrain differential might be deflecting or causing some issue with the shots when fired. Axe is trying desperately to hold on to the star advantage. Katush opening fire. Uh, oh, knocking out this building. Oh, boy. He's going to need to get out of there because one more bro. Oh, up there it goes. It's like too late. And unfortunately, with this thing down, people behind here can now be hit. So that's the one th nice thing about this building. It kind of does block shots from, like, Katusha fire. MG, though, probably going to die. It's on fire. It's not, it's not looking great. Wow. Is it really going to live? Holy fuck. It actually lived. I'm actually I'm very surprised in that. Very surprised he made it through. Because <laughs> you figure on fire, no health, yeah, it's dead. Nope, took a mortar hit and just kept on going. Ch sure, why not? Meanwhile, Ally still causing some issues. They are, they do have some AT in the region, and we do have a Panther being deployed, though. Uh, we don't have a KV-2, as far as I can see. Um, at least anywhere close to getting it. At least by fuel and whatnot. Uh, nothing yet over here, and nothing... Wow, okay, Ditcher and Terra haven't picked anything yet. Fair play. Just to waiting to see what the, what the enemy has. Sherman opening fire with a uh, explosive round, pushing back for Kenworfer, which is a very weak AT gun, but great for surprise attack. Anyway, they might be able to knock out that bunker. Though, pack gun moving on in to help push back that Sherman. I'm curious if he would just move back a little open fire, but he's so low on health, he may just prepare to pull him back. 
um, and then hit the MG another time. We have a pan. We have two Panthers actually being deployed, which could be very bad for the Allies if they can, you know, use them like combined and just overwhelm the Axis forces. Sorry, the Allied forces. Then we now have Jackson, so that can counteract a, a uh, Panther long range. So we'll see what happens. A lot of howitzers currently being deployed. This guy's a little bit of a howitzer spammer. Uh, three's a little overkill, in my opinion. Three, three's a bit overkill. It's not like the Axis are spamming that many mortars. He has one. So, I, I kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. He has one artillery piece for sure, but I wouldn't call him spamming. Actually, a good artillery piece right here would do a lot. Or over here, whichever he just, whatever he picks. And said he's going for mid. Okay. Interesting. Another panther being deployed. So, we have three panthers on the field. Allies, if, if three panthers charge with infantry support, that's going to be a hell of a fight for the allies. So... Anyway, uh, Over Sudan just like in the building opening fire with its better weapons, but enough enough fire from all the different targets. Definitely gonna slowly push it back. Again, there's just too many units for it, even though it's really good. Panther on standby with a T gun. We have an MG also kind of back. Yeah, looks like they're prepping a Panther charge. Meanwhile, these guys are over here just trying to defend this point. And stop them from advancing. Though once again, artillery right here would probably break up a lot of their forces and force the enemy to uh, reposition, which could give it the leverage to take this point if done at the correct time. Anyway, Axis forces prepped and ready to go. One of them got a little cocky and pushed forward, but luckily the Allied AT guns were like, "No, you're gonna fall back now." We have a uh, Katusha fire coming in, not really hitting all that much. Well, pack gun's like, well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, they're trying to push up, but I don't think it's going to work all that well. They push up too much, Jackson can't open fire, but we'll see. Katusha's surviving the Stuka. Oh, boy, that Stuka team's got to be like, God damn it, we hit it, but we didn't kill it. Anyway, Allied Forces trying to pick off some of the Pioneer squads. Brumbar trying to push back the, some of the Infantry squads. Panther using its range and assisted by a pack gun to beat the Greyhound. It looks like it will be able to. Uh, it gets one more shot. Nope, misses. Pack gun is out of range. And Axis forces are actually pushing back. Okay. Did not expect that. Can honestly say I, I, I fully expected the Axis to well advance and maybe try to kill the Greyhound. But no, they're pulling back to heal. Not a terrible idea. Wait for more man or wait for more men. But I, judging by the podcast, I don't know how many more men you can actively deploy on either side without being like, yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm good. I can't deploy anything. So, there is there there is that. There is that. You want MG trying to hold, but once again, the mortar coverage is just way too much. Panzer Grenadier Squad over here. Wow. Good hit. I like how he got in there and just opened with like whale on that thing. That, that, that was a really good maneuver by him. Knock out that unit. Probably could have fired on the S-85, but good thing he retreated. Get the thing healed up and then wait for another good attack. Meanwhile, the Allied play, oh, sorry, the German play over here. Oh boy, he's just being pushed back. He doubled down the artillery, so I'm assuming he's just going to start pounding this entire position over here. And it looks like it's working. They, ha they are repositioning quite a bit and moving more behind here, which really is not going to help unless he's directly in front in the small window. I'd probably be better to aim this way, but that's just me. If you feel like that's better for, like, ambush attacks or something, that's fine. But I don't think he's going to charge light armor, especially because you have an S-85 on standby. So Panther needs to be healed. We have another artillery piece. Uh, oh, okay, we have two, sorry. Uh, that will be made. Huge al- oh my god. Allies pushing forward. Germans trying to do anything. Mine's coming in, but kind of missing most of the targets. A uh, better spot would have been over here, but I digress. Uh, Greyhound charging in with a broken engine. Pack gun probably going to over... It. Yeah, oh, something did. It did get knocked out. We have Katusha fire over in mid. They're trying to hold back the Allies. It looks like we have artillery coming down. White Phosphorus as well coming down to kill the support equipment. Yeah, this is This is bad. Allies pushing on in. Up, oh, artillery coming down. Brumbar and Panther coming in to try to push back their remaining infantry. It looks like they did. Infantry's in a mass retreat. Oh, might be able to get up some free weapons. That's cool, right? 
What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Uh, oh, never mind. MG42. So you, you lost almost it on or something, I would assume. Great. S85 on standby. We also done kind of pushing with a Volk squad. Not really gonna do much, but hey, well, I mean it's it's something, I guess. Artillery open fire with a new Panzerwerfer. So yeah, Ruin just become a artillery hound. Although to be fair, he has now recon its bomb ability, so I fully expect some bombs to be dropped. And Red Tower with White Phosphorus went with. Oh boy. Sorry, went with Rifle Company. I mean, he can also get better tanks, so that's pretty effective. But we'll see if he actually does it. KV-2 now deployed. And, oh boy, this thing is going to, like, again, just a clear example. Just cause a ton of damage to any group of infantry in mid. Or anything that decides to come in to range. That being said, it can have issue close range. So that's typically where I prefer infantry to fight. So that way, again, you kind of pin it. And it can't, it can't really hurt you. But that's just me and my feelings on it again if you're a really good uh pro kind of ma maneuver guy that can kind of move it ahead of time then great but th my experience is well kind of the opposite anyway uh we have a lot of force over here again good artillery strike could do a lot uh suka moving up which could be a little risky it does have 40 kills so at least they are trying to and i'm assuming what they might do is deploy the recon plane and then from there, they can identify key targets with the Stuka. And then maneuver the Stuka to where it is needed more. Jackson's moving up. Oh, sorry. Jackson is sure moving up. Like, yeah, this is going to be great. And there's a Panzergrade here, the pack squad. KV2 taking the bomb like a champ. Pants Grenadier and Pack doing exactly what they need to, pushing back the Allied armor and almost killing it. Very lucky to kill it. Very, very lucky. Meanwhile, uh, Lieutenant and a lot of troops, which by the way are very vetted, uh, moving on in. Looks like they have a decent counterattack on right. Though, oh my god. Uh, oh, that's not good. Oh, nice job killing the Howitzer, but you still have to deal with the Sherman. Oh, Damn, they might try to steal that. Good shot of mortar carriage. It looks like the uh, artillery coming down hurts from the infantry and killed the panther, so it's a win-win. Both sides. Either side gets the panther, but the, the very annoying, super powerful unit is knocked out. Super bomb coming in, try to help clear the point. Almost killed the cache, but no, no, we're not going to get a kill on the cache. Uh, Brumbar opening fire with its explosive rounds. Push back the infantry blob over here. Maybe not as effectively as the one on the right, but still did pretty damn well. I mean, he's doing decently well. But we'll see how long they actually last for. Uh, Panther moving in. Uh, might have actually gotten a kill. Hold on. On the Sherman. Which is good for it. Yep, actually, probably. It's funny how they probably know where that major is, but they can't get to it. That's the problem. Uh, actually, does he even have a major? No, he has no centralized command. Okay. Sure, why not? Sherman moving in, thinking, I'm gonna conquer the world, and the Panthers bring it down to reality, be like, nah, son, you're not, you're not gonna beat me. It's gonna be very difficult for you to beat me. Uh, it's like, how about I bring paratroopers with, uh, bazookas? Uh, no. No, no, no. The least I can say is about Hond is he is pulling them back, so good for him. Good, 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 really, seriously, good for him. Pulling them back, kind of causing distraction, though. Jesus Christ. Someone got back there and caused a lot of havoc with the uh, cl cluster bomb. So good for him. Uh, managed to uh, hurt the Stuka, knock out pack gun, and damaged the artillery piece, which is actually causing quite a bit of damage. Uh, if he, especially if he's calling in it right here. The artillery could wipe out a lot of these units over here, but that's just me. Uh, this artillery piece, by the way, is barely hanging in. He needs healed. I don't know why he's not being healed by the medic base right there. He's so close to dying. It's not even funny. Oh, shoot. But it may not matter. Uh, artillery piece is down. Axe is desperately trying to grab onto any point possible. S-85 and KV-2 just causing massive amounts of damage in mid as they try to hold. 
Here comes the Suka. Oh, this one's almost dead. If they could kill the S285, that would be kind of huge. Panther pulling back to be healed. They, they retook the right. They were trying to retake left. Brumbar's like pushing that stuff back. Good for them. Might be able to turn the tide and win the game, but we'll see. Uh, probably not. It's so low. But again, I've had two points in turn the tide, so it's entirely possible. Nice shot. Knocked out the Brumbar. Axe is now on the defense again. Though, we have an elephant being deployed, which I'm like, okay, as long as you have an escort. And he does. He has a panther and such. So, as long as you use that correctly, he should be relatively fine. Missed XD. I'm assuming he was trying to go for his um, forward base. But the allies are retaking that point. And with the allies there, I think this is game. Yep, yeah, five, four... Three. Up, they decrude it. And there it goes. I was like, I knew it was about to end. I know the Colin Stuka bombs and whatnot, but yeah, it's, it was it was pretty much game over. It was absolutely game over. It was a good attempt. It was a good fight. Like, it, it, all honesty, it was. Uh, Elephant did get the fire, which kind of does suck. But overall, the Germans, if they would have gotten their more advanced stuff, they would have been better. But I feel like with what they had, it was just... It was just a slow attrition game, and I feel like the Allies just played better and had less attrition, which is why they won. Which is why they won. Let's double-check damage. It's, uh, again, uh, Mo got most damage and barely most kills. Oh, Araxel, again, not too far from them. Same thing with the German players, with uh, Ditcher getting first with damage. But, on the flip side, JC getting the most kills and then being one off. So, yep, definitely about the same. So, great job, man. G g great job. <laughs> in any case guys that's game i want to thank you for watching i hope you guys enjoyed make sure you like and subscribe to some great show on seven and i'll see you all next time hello everyone and before i go i have a special shout out for patreon supporters ace joey mesro junior chicklist just thomas plays matthew Leppin, ollie only play apples rifle sam smith Sarge McPain, Streaking Wookie, White Hot D, Aaron Yee, Jordan Savat, Leo Lu, Michael Pearson, Nathan Angus, Ferrari Spawn, and Tim. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support. You all rock. This has been Grayshaw17. I'll see you all next time.